Hello and welcome to another video here in the F Pavlouz channel. We're going to be trying something a little bit spicy today. I've been wanting to bring back a Reclaimer in Amulet for a while, mostly because I just freaking love this card. <laughs> no other real reason. Uh, so uh, what I've been thinking though is what if we do the smart thing that everybody else is doing and just add a couple of extra cards and just throw in some Yorions in there. Uh, sure, we're going to be missing out on a couple of... You know, Amulet, which is an important card, it is after all what the deck is named after, but obviously whenever we take an approach like this one, we are kind of uh, ignoring and leaving behind a little bit of uh, speed, and instead what we're gaining is access to grinding power and extra, you know, just extra cards that can give us some more value. So amongst those, we're going to be playing four copies of Primeval Titan, obviously, but we're also going to be playing some copies of Cultivator Colossus. Losses. This card obviously fantastic in a deck like this. We can also, you know, once we resolve the Colossus, then we can like net a bunch of mana. We can get a Yorion and then go all over, all over again. So that's also kind of neat. Um, we are also playing, you know, like the obvious Dryads and Asusas, but because we are actually uh, jamming some copies of Elad Ambris Call, that allows us to have uh, access to a one-off in the main deck, which can be pretty interesting in Endurance. This card is obviously fantastic against stuff like Mill, also very, very good against uh, some graveyard cards, uh, graveyard decks like Dredge or stuff like that, Reanimator. Um, but having access to this game one can gain us a, a significant uh, advantage, particularly in, in those kind of matchups. And we have access to both Hidden Armor Skull and Summoner's Pact in order to get it. So uh, we can uh, we can actually get access to a couple of interesting tools. We also have access to Explore since we're adding some extra cards. I wanted to make sure that I still have a reasonable amount of ramp in there. So we have the four Gracers, four Explorers, three Asusas, and four Dryads. That should be should be plenty of ramp for our deck. Uh, Reclaimer is also a ramp sometimes whenever we have access to the two copies of Flagstones of Trocare. As you can see, I'm not going to all in on this concept. I have only a couple of copies alongside three temple gardens and the reason for this is whenever we're playing a slower grindier matchup we can you know take it easy and we can go for the for the flex stones route but this is not really a primary game plan uh, as we've seen in you know the green white reclaimer decks of the past which wanted to go turn one reclaimer turn to flex stones every single game uh, the rest of the deck is the cards that you would expect so we have access to a couple of fetch lands that we can you know find our our uh, duels and uh, basics with. Of course, we also have access to Radiant Fountain, Bojugevog, and Vesuva, all of these in the main deck. Um, Crumbling Vestige as a one-off is also very interesting alongside Amulet and Elvish Reclaimer. We're playing uh, 11 Bounce Lands, which is uh, two more than the normal count that we see in Amulet decks. Um, I was thinking of going up to 12. In fact, that was uh, my, my last cut when I was trying to, to round up the, the deck list. The third copy of Coral Turf was the card that I ended up cutting, going down to 41 lands. But uh, the fact that we have Reclaimer and Expedition Map means that if we do need to get a Bounce Land, we can more often than not work around the way to, to get it. So uh, usually Reclaimer lists uh, have had uh, less Bounce Lands anyway, so... Hopefully that doesn't punish us. Uh, that doesn't punish us uh, too much. Uh, Slayer Stronghold, Sun Home, of course. Two copies of the Lair West, Ursa Saga's busted, and so is Valak, the Molten Tentacle. So we got a pretty solid, consistent main deck. As I was saying, obviously we have access to our Yorion in the sideboard, and then uh, running things out, we have uh, two copies of Relic of Progenitors alongside three Explosives. These are gonna be our Artifact uh, forms of interaction, uh, Relic very good against the Shadow decks, uh, Explosives very good against the Hammers and stuff like that. Uh, there's also the possibility of playing Veil of Summer instead of Relic. I think I'm going towards the Graveyard Hate uh, card instead. There's uh, the, the serious uptick in popularity of the deck Living End. Same thing with, you know, like the reanimators of the world. So I think having access to extra Graveyard is uh, Graveyard Head is pretty solid. Ghost Quarter and Cavern of Souls as our toolbox lands uh, to get. 
and then Outland Liberator and two extra copies of Endurance. And then the last uh, bullet that we have access to is Ember Cool the Promised Sand. We cannot summon respect for this one, but we still cannot let Amber Skull. And in matchups like you know the four color Yarion decks or some control matchups, having access to the one of Ember Cool can be extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, finishing up the deck list, we have three copies of Force of Vigor. This card is obviously fantastic against Hammer, fantastic against Blood Moon decks. Uh, I, I wouldn't say fantastic, I would say necessary <laughs> against the Blood Moon decks. Uh, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is the deck that we're going to be playing hopefully uh, through an entire league. If you're enjoying the content as usual, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and I can see you there for round number one. All right, here we go. Somehow managed to <laughs> draw both Dalakids here. Uh, we're playing against the Lurus deck. If this is Hammer, this is not a great hand. And if this is some sort of rock deck, this is also not a great hand. So I think I'm just going to ship it. Uh, this hand is much better, obviously. So let's keep this. And I think we're sending the Explorer here. There's an argument, honestly, for sending the Dryad. This is Hammer. Okay. Hmm. Is this version of Hammer? Kind of wishing that we had that uh, that explorer right about now, huh? <laughs> Thoughtsies, main deck Thoughtsies. All right, there goes my dryad. It doesn't really do anything though. I guess that they should just take the, the second amulet actually. Taking second amulet is so much better. And what do we want to draw here? I guess I want to draw any land any land will make it so i can spend this next turn just deploying my mana without really costing me anything so yeah i really sad we didn't draw an top land we just drew this redundant primeval titan that doesn't really do anything for us um it seems fine though this seems just fine. Um, definitely interesting in my opponent not, you know, they just drawing this kind of dead cards, you know, instead of drawing, uh, you know, good cards that would do stuff in the matchup. <laughs> um, okay, what do you got here? Cigar the Sade is probably bad for me. That's not a great draw so we're gonna have to skip our draws our land drop here gonna have to skip our land drop which I'm not stoked about maybe we are far behind enough that I just need to just make my land drop and hope that I get there because I guess that drawing any land means that we're just in okay shape. Okay, so there, we're going to take 11 here. So it's a big problem. That's a big problem. So what I want to draw here... What can I draw here? We're taking 11... Yeah, that that skip land drop is gonna is gonna cost us the game. I think it's just not good enough. So I can go dryad. I can play my dryad. Pact for Gracer. Play this. But then we have a blue mana floating, so that doesn't do anything for me. I'm trying to see if I can use this turn to call, and then I can call for an Asusa, and that can allow me to next turn, uh, potentially, if I draw a Gracer, cast a Remigal Titan. What if I... We packed for Gracer, play Gracer, off of the Windsweep Heath. Then... 
I play Growth Chamber. I mean, I can play and pay for Pact, I guess. So I guess I'm, I'm putting myself in a spot. I'm putting myself in a spot where I need to draw another Bounce Land. And if I draw another Bounce Land, I can potentially do some stuff. So I guess we're doing that. <laughs> It's not great. I'm not in good shape here, but... I'm not in good shape here. Gracer. Play Gracer. Play Bounce. Bounce this. Play Dryad. Yeah, missing that land drop was just way too much of an issue. So now, Gracer jumps in front of the Forge Tender. We die to Shadow Spear. Opponent can make a token. Not in good shape here. Definitely not in good shape. Missing that lander was extremely punishing. Ink Moth Anexus. Yeah. That's a, that's a dead grazer. <laughs> I guess if I find Celestia Sanctuary. Yeah, if I drew exactly Celestia Sanctuary, we may be in okay shape here. But you could bog. That doesn't really do it. That does not do it. I mean, we do have a chump blocker. No, because then they have they have two things. Yeah, so we're, we're just dead here. We're dead to, to the Ursa Saga. All right, next game. Uh, we do have a lot of um, good cyber cards here though. So all of those are probably great. Don't need Colossus. Don't need Bajugabog. Don't need Endurance. Um, Reclaimer's really slow. Probably cut a couple of those. Cut a flex. Eh, probably not. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm probably gonna play cavern over flex stones because this is a green source. Oh, maybe this is just fine. Um, just shave and explore. Yeah, this looks fine to me. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. All right, what do we got here? Um, turn one saga. We got the force uh, without green sources. Uh, this hand's good though. I do like this hand a fair bit. Um, I think I'm shipping Asusa here. Turn one catacombs. No need, no need to fetch just yet. I could have played explosives preemptively, but we have both force and explosives. So if my opponent thought seizes me on one, um, we're still in a spot where they kind of have to choose. Uh, this is fine. Try 
kind of want to force this pitch in the explore <clears throat> Tap Temple Garden. I think I'm just gonna develop my mana here. Pass the turn. They did take a pretty reasonable hit. Next turn we can explode this for one if we have to. We can just do something else entirely. Definitely getting rid of the saga is it's pretty solid. Okay. Play that, fetch. <clears throat> Basic forest, play my Asusa. A 1 2 against a 1 1. Lines up well. <laughs> Cigardas aid. <clears throat> um. Get Yorion, play my land, say go. Don't want to attack, I'm gonna leave it behind to block. Sure, they, they can you know put a hammer on this Memnite, but like I don't really care if they do. <clears throat> sure. Also, they're just doing this main phase, which means that if I want to, I can just take 11 and not care. Yeah, just gonna do that. Just gonna take 11. Just draw my Primeval Titan. Don't mind if I do. That castle is a fantastic draw. Because now what I can do is this. <clears throat> Summon respect for a Primeval Titan. Cast my Prime Time. And we do have the explosives in hand. So what I can do is I can get... Bounce land plus crumbling vestige. Float a blue mana, whatever. Bounce this, play this. And I'm not going to attack because the one point of damage doesn't matter. <clears throat> and this means that if my opponent has the path to exile for the prime time, they still can't attack with the Memnite because I just block and then crack explosives. So I think this should be locked up. I guess I can just never find another. They can have the path and I just never find another prime time nor bounce land. And then I'm going to be in trouble. But... Yeah, I mean that that turn one force was obviously a massive deal, getting rid of both of both of my opponent's mana sources, leaving them with a bunch of, you know, cards stranded in hand. And obviously, if, if they don't have the, if they don't have the, the thing, they're just super dead, right? They don't have the path to exile. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So we get to blow up. There's stuff on end step, then we untap, we attack with Titan, and then we Yorion blink the Titan. Leaving us with a blocker and another primeval Titan trigger. It's not bad. Not bad. Imagine that my opponent's trying to figure out, okay, can I do I need to get rid of the Titan right now? And the answer is yes. Okay, so this means that we win. This means that my opponent is effectively dead. Shadow Spear. Okay. Obviously, they should not attack in the face of the onboard explosives. Still gonna crack the explosives on end step, because this allows my Titan to attack, and then I can just cast my Orion. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That's Orion mana. Oh. Sure. <laughs> um, who needs to play 60 cards anyway, right? 
Imagine playing 60 cards. Ping ya, ping ya. Always yes, always yes, always yield. <clears throat> that was a cool top deck. Not that we needed it, but nice to have. All right, game number three. Game numero tres. On the draw. Do have a healthy amount of green cards for the force. So I don't think that we need to add more. We have 32. Seems fine. Um, yeah, guess this is fine. Let's see how game number three goes. Let's see how game number three goes. Opponents on the play. Huh. Um, I guess I keep this. <clears throat> Do they have turn one Foxies? No, as per Sentinel. Sentinel is kind of annoying, but also not really. Second Sentinel. It's a little bit more annoying. Saga. Let's get a temple garden. Take our one point. Do we want to blow up the saga? Reclaimer is very interesting. Reclaimer is super interesting. So I can go... Can we have my opponent draw a card? I'm gonna upkeep blow up the saga and one of these Esper Sentinels pitching the Explorer. Now the question is, should I play the Reclaimer? Is the Reclaimer, I think that the Reclaimer being in play is better for me. Blow both of those up. They're gonna get to draw one card. Which kinda sucks. So that's per Sentinel was a two for one there. Next turn we can go Saga, say go. Another Esper Sentinel. Doesn't really do anything. Amulet is probably your best draw. Amulet is definitely your best draw. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Well, here's a saga. Here's engineered explosives for one. Oh, that's right. Esper Sentinel is a messed up card. Say so yes. I, I cannot afford to have them draw a bunch of cards here. Um, we are not dead to the Ink Moth this turn. That's why it's it's okay, I think, for me to, to play the Explosives on that turn. I honestly did forget about both of those triggers, though. Like, I was hoping that I could activate Reclaimer, but I, I can't have my opponent draw two cards there, right? Just too much. <clears throat> they could have Paladin into oh lures to hand well i can beat that pretty sure that i can beat that so if i play heath reclaimer turns into a three four but 
I also don't need to do that either. Just pass the turn. The great thing here is I just don't need to use this. Like this can just sit here and I just chill. So my opponent gonna thoughts is me. Bring it on. <laughs> Got him. The funny thing is I don't need to draw anything here. I have all the stuff that I need. Like I don't need to draw anything. Like I have enough to win just on the board. I have more than enough stuff that I need to win this game on the board right now. So they have Lurus and whatever they find off of this. Cranial plating, sure, whatever. So Lurus plating and known. Um, I'm gonna find an amulet here. Um, I can make a token or I can just activate Reclaimer. Hmm. Make token or activate Reclaimer? See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a token here. No, I, I, I can activate Reclaimer now. I can do both, actually. Because I can just go get Crumbling Vestige. This is sick. We develop our mana. And we also develop our board. <laughs> Jeez. Vestige being so sick so far. <clears throat> Dryad. Well, that's probably just game, isn't it? Oh, attack for four. If my opponent gets all crazy and they want to do stuff with the Sync Moth Nexus, we can just go get Ghost Quarter and blow it up. So that's why I don't want to play the Triad. Like, I'd rather... I guess I could have done both. Yeah, I could have done both. But then I have to bounce my Bodo's Garrison, and I don't really want to just yet. I'm just going to chill here. I'm so far ahead. And I think I can't lose... I think I literally can't lose from this board state. Yeah. If they go Lurus into Esper Sentinel, we just win the game. So that's neat. That's neat. <clears throat> and that is a dead opponent. Yorion Amulet, OP. Yorion Amulet, confirm broken. So busted. So busted. Second Valakit. Here's a Dryad. One, two, one, two. You're your amulet. Too strong. See you next round. Welcome to round number two. Yep. <laughs> Keep. I love that after we have a, a round that beautifully, beautifully showcases the power of playing Reclaimer in your deck, like we have in the previous game. Now we have just like a normal amulet, just casual amulet draw. Just like if we were playing 60 cards. Just like if we were playing 60 cards. We can even put Yorion into our hand on turn two. It's, it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. My opponent says that they're a big fan. Say good luck. Thank you, opponent. 
thanks to you as well. <clears throat> My opponent is the very first amulet player to see the the Urian amulet tech. It's probably gonna matter more than putting urine in hand, huh? <laughs> I mean, my opponent's dead next turn, and I don't think I can, I can die from here. Unless they have second amulet in hand and they have like the turn two kill rolled up, which they may. They're floating mana, which is a bad sign for me. Yep, that's a, that's a bad sign for me. All right, am I dead here? Please play a Dryad. Damn it. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't float mana. Just develop mana. I mean, the bad thing here is that even if they don't have lethal, which I'm pretty sure they do, I'm still probably dead next turn anyways. It's a Dryad. They don't have the Titan. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Don't let anybody tell you that the better player doesn't always win. <laughs> uh, it sure feels good to be this good. <laughs> Sure feels good to be this good. <clears throat> so, T West, Growth Chamber. I'm not playing around anything, game one. Just gonna 32 my opponent here. Uh, we do have the Vesuvine play, but it's it's not a big deal because um, because we have double Titan, right? So we're getting we're getting more triggers. And I smartly put 80 cards in my deck, making it that less likely for me to draw my Border's Garrison and Slayer Stronghold, huh? Isn't that some tight, some tight gameplay? Pause that, whatever. Attack. Bala could Celestia Sanctuary. <clears throat> And then double strike, boom, 32. Got him. All right, the mirror. First Vigor is good. That is also good. Ember cool, also good. Outland Liberator, also good. Endurance, no good. Bog, no good. What else? Uh, Cultivator is like, okay. I'm not like stoked about it or anything. Can shave some explorers, cut a cavern. And what else, what else, what else? This is fine, I guess. I don't know how I feel about Colossus in this matchup. Like, I, I know I love the Ember Cool, the Promiscent, because this can just go over the top <clears throat> when things get clogged up. This just go, goes way over the top, and it's the only thing that can win from otherwise unsurmountable board states. Because you just start, you know, shooting your opponent with their own Balakets and stuff. So resolving this... I mean, not even resolving it, just like getting the trigger is, is just game winning by itself the vast majority of the time i'm just trying to figure out whether i'd rather have explore number three over colossus number two i think i do i think i do hopefully we don't get punished by that but we're gonna be on the draw here just want to you know play the cards that add to my consistency as opposed to the ones that add to my explosiveness 
This hand seems pretty slow on the on the mirror match, huh? This hand is just straight up unkeepable, obviously. It's a no lander. So we're going to five. But we do have a companion. So. Ugh. <clears throat> I mean, guess I'm keeping this hand because it has a pretty solid upside, but just bought on both gracers. Just hope that we find a non bounce land off the top. We probably have like one or two turns to find it. <clears throat> Whoops. I think it's a fine keep, though. <clears throat> I think this is a fine keep. My opponent's also stumbling over there. No, they're not. Land? Easy land. Let's go. Let's go. Anybody's game. Anybody's game. And now, now this next turn, we get the Reclaimer down. We can get some stuff going. That's a force. Uh, that's a, a force target, I mean. Oh, please play a dryad opponent. Please play that dryad. Yes. 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 Opponent's playing Breeding Pool. What are the chances that they're playing some sort of counter spell? <clears throat> so I think I'm pitching in a numbers call. Over explore. about that so they have only three unknown cards in hand <clears throat> so Nasusa no extra land drops definitely happy I kept the explore nice so we play this we play this Bounce Castle. Next turn, we untap. Untap, play Amulet. <clears throat> play Amulet. For one, have a white floating. Have one green floating. We can sacrifice a land to the Reclaimer. We get a bounce land. No, that doesn't quite work. So is it better for me to hold on to this bounce land in hand? Or is it, for, is it better for me to play it out? Is it better for me to hold the bounce land in hand? And I'm only asking this question because I have the amulet in hand, right? Otherwise, I would not be asking this question. I think that the chances that my opponent has a force or any sort of way to answer my amulet are high enough that <clears throat> I'd rather just develop my mana here. And now this coming turn, I can go amulet into Yorion or amulet into Expedition Map plus Crack. That's good. Saga. Saga. Four mana being held by my opponent.
Let's pass the turn, hold up Ghost Squatter, so I can blow up a land if I need to. Worst case scenario, Tireless Tracker, okay. Uh, this this card is just not very good in this in this matchup. It's possible that my opponent may be may be inexperienced in the matchup. Um, so crack that. It's good at flax stones, so we can have more lands in play. Find Teleria West here. I I just allowed myself there to get blown out by Force of Vigor. But I think the likelihood that at this point the likelihood with my opponent playing the tracker there, the likelihood that they have force is just so low that I'm fine taking the gamble. And here I'm just, you know, going for the attack because, uh, well, obviously I just, you know, don't really care uh, if they answer my amulet somehow, which is not very likely, really. Um, what do bounds here? I definitely want to make sure that I I'm I'm gonna go squatter draw step. And I'm gonna blow up the semi growth chamber. Because that makes it so the only way that I actually that's not true. I was I was gonna say that the only way that I can get God is I mean I'm I'm I guess I'm just chilling. I think I'm just chilling, because like the only way that I can my opponent get ahead of me is if they have their own amulet. And as long as I have the Ghost Quarter activation, my opponent cannot really do anything to me here. So I'm just I'm just chilling. So let's bounce that attack with prime time. Just gonna get Valakut and the blue source. Yeah, let's get the Valakut Growth Chamber. And I'm gonna bounce the other Growth Chamber. So here they take eight, and I'm just gonna let them untap. And now they can't they can't answer my amulet now, right? Unless they're playing Nature's Claim or something like that, which I don't think they are. Um, and we can simply just go ahead, and if they go for the Titan, we just go squatter them. So I guess that the only way that I get got here is if I go for a Dryad kill, and my opponent top deck the Force exactly there. Seems unlikely. Seems very unlikely. So I think this one's locked up. Shout out to Fourth Vigor for being incredible both of the games that I played so far. Both of the matches that I played so far. Yeah, this is the only way that my opponent can get out of this, right? Like they top the amulet and they've been sandbagging a bounce land or a Vesuva. Literal only way that I can that I can lose here. But even if that's the case, we can just um, when my opponent tries to haste their titan or whatever, we we just go squatter them, so. Doesn't really matter what they do. We are just Gucci here. We are just Gucci. And as I was saying here, I'm going to go for second prime time as opposed to going for... 
I'm gonna go for second titan as opposed to going for dryad because they could they could have, you know somehow have top deck the force or whatever but yeah second titan gets there sweet 2-0 with your own amulet <laughs> let's see you i'll see you for the next round here we go with round number three yeah great hand great hand so turn one amulet, turn two we can pack for Asusa or we can just go for Castle. Depends on what my opponent's playing. Yeah, sounds looking good. Gonna name human. Too bad that there's no value in naming Merfolk or something. Playing against Hammer. Terrible draw. Such a bad draw. Um, Alright. Gonna back for Azusa. Float mana. Bounce. Play this. Play that. Play that. Here we go. So if they have the turn two kill, I am dead anyway. So I'm not gonna block the Mem Knight. I'm not gonna block the Mem Knight. They just don't have anything. I can beat them not having anything. I'm pretty sure I can beat them. So we're gonna play this Titan, and I'm just gonna haste here. If my opponent's like the, the mad person playing path in the main deck of Hammer, so be it, you know? Attack for eight. I'm fortunate that we can't block this because we have to use the Vesuva. So I may just be dead. Is there any way that I can play around that? Not really. Without the main the ghost quarter. Like I could have if if I could have, you know, Vesuva the Rink Moth Nexus and use it as a blocker. So that being the case, I'm gonna go for T West and Saga and hope for the best. We could be dead to land plus hammer. <clears throat> but there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about hand plus hammer. Land plus hammer, sorry. There's the land. Cycle. Alright. Wanna know. Force of Vigor. Engineer the explosives. Outland Liberator. Ghost Quarter. Uh, we cut the Cultivator Colossus. Cut the Endurance. Shave a couple of reclaimers and that seems fine. Maybe one Colossus over the third explorer. That's a two door target. Yeah, it seems fine. All right, we're on the draw. Harn's kind of nice, I'll give it. It's not fast, but it's pretty robust. And now it's both things. Awesome. So... I think we're going for... Basic here. And going for Gracer over uh, turn one Reclaimer, I think. Second is Percentinal. It's kind of fine. Um, play that. Play that. 
Your go, opponent. Have the perfect blocker. And now we have a pretty solid threat. Two pretty solid threats. Well, this is just fantastic, right? They didn't do anything at all. Now we just pass the turn. We get to add double activated reclaimer, which means that we get to ramp, which is awesome. Which hands have, has my opponent kept this match? Cathar Commando. <laughs> That's sure. <laughs> That's a card. I have been got. You want to attack a point? I dare you. I double dare you to attack me. Coward. Get our flagstones. Suck our flagstones. Get our shock land. Well, we can't go the saga route, so since we can't go the saga route, don't think I care their saga just yet because the construct is not going to matter. So I think I'm just gonna go for Togaria West here. Nice. This doesn't serve the Dryad though, so I'm just gonna play my Primeval Titan and chill. Let's get two Sagas here. More to be threatening, more so than anything else. Like, I don't care for the Sagas, like, if my opponent wants to blow them up, I just. that's perfectly fine for me. It's more so the fact that I can't really die from here. So I feel I feel fairly safe. Um maybe you should have attacked with the proclaimer there. <laughs> sure. Oh yes, please. This is this is great for me. Fantastic. Awesome. Best case scenario. So now I can pack for Dryad and I, and I can just go off. Um, so one. Oh, okay. Yeah, my opponent's soon enough. Yeah, I, I. That's that was not a good play. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't the best play I've ever seen. Three and zero somehow with your your amulet. Is the deck clearly busted? Yes, yes it is. It is busted. All right, playing against misplayed ginger, one of the current trophy leaders. Uh, sure, let's give this a hand. It's kind of medium. Also ginger not playing a companion. He's been playing Lurus decks all the time. I wonder what that means. Lurid Merktide? We have the turn to Gracer. The dream. That kind of changes things, doesn't it? <clears throat> I think I want to play out the blue source as opposed to the green source. Maybe wrong there, but. So now we have the blocker for the Gracer, with the blocker for the Monkey. Next turn we're gonna make another blocker. Just nice. Opponent obviously has the Volt, <laughs> right? Why would why would my opponent ever not have the Lightning Bolt there for the for the Gracer, right? Gruel Turf. So. <clears throat> Can hold up. Never mind, they cannot hold up. <laughs> Counter spell. Um, really hoping that they are not playing a main deck. What's his name version, right? But Jukubo would be nice here. 
Cavern of Souls is kind of okay. So I think we make a token, force my opponent to have another removal spell. I could go for Expedition Map for Bujugabog. That's fine though. So we're gonna name Giant here. And <clears throat> play Expedition Map. So we're gonna make a token, which I assume that Ginger is gonna have the removal spell for, but at least I'm forcing him to do something about it. Like I'm forcing him to use his mana. Next turn we are getting, we are getting our, um, what's his name here? We are getting our amulet, which is nice. Don't really have anything to do with it, but <laughs> main deck blood moon. Fuck me, man. That's hilarious. Obviously, that we're playing against the main deck blood moon version. Obviously, <laughs> obviously that they're playing main deck blood moon. <sighs> well. Obviously, um, I've, I've seen enough here. I, I cannot beat the Blood Moon game one, so. Seen enough. Those were good, that's good. These are good. Definitely want Liberator. Don't want Colossus. A couple of forces are fine. Shave a couple of castles. Racer and Reclaimer are fine. I wonder if I want Emrakul. Do I want Emrakul? I don't think so. I don't think so, I'm just gonna go with this. And I'd rather have Pact that call, than Call, because I can cast a Pact for Liberator under a Blood Moon, and I cannot cast a Call. So if I top deck an Adamber's Call, then um, that's just dead, right? Whereas if I top deck a Summoner's Pact, sure, I have to pay for the Pact, but uh, at least I can, um, I can Pact for Liberator and potentially get out of a sticky situation. I think this is fine. I could consider cutting some number of sagas. Hmm. That's interesting. So I can cut a saga for like another castle. And... <clears throat> I do have our basic. We do have turn three Asusa. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep this hand. Maybe it's a little bit greedy. Maybe it's a little bit greedy, but. Turn one monkey into turn two Blood Moon. Is that the future that awaits me? At least this means that they, they can't, they can't turn to moon me, because they have to. They're gonna need to use removal spell on the reclaimer. Mm hmm. Imagine not having turn one monkey into turn two removal spell, right? <laughs> Imagine being that unlucky. <clears throat> hey, I wanted that one. Float of mana here. Relic. Hmm. 
like that. <clears throat> yeah, I guess I'm gonna force my opponent to have the I'm gonna force my opponent to have the counter spell here. Could be bad for me. <clears throat> But I'm more afraid of the Blood Moon on turn three. Play land, play that. Say go. <clears throat> sure. So they do have the Blood Moon, right? That's why they're playing like that. <clears throat> yep. So they're they're prioritizing getting a basic into play. And now they know that <clears throat> they know that this is connecting, so they can even if they miss the land drop, like they're still fine. Blood Moon sucks, man. Blood Moon sucks. Definitely like this is a mad a bad matchup already. And with them like the new thing being that they're playing main deck blood moon it just makes things so much worse so so much worse than than before which is pretty brutal um yeah we, you we can you know every now and then steal a game one uh, against against the Murtag deck but they just you know spend three mana and play a blood moon and that's it Playing around the Merktide here by exiling there. Again, like I think that there's a Blood Moon right here, so like doesn't really matter what I do. Um I mean I guess this is the window. This is the window to pack for a liberator. I'm dead to... <laughs> I was gonna say exactly that, dude. I was gonna say I'm dead to subtlety. Oh, man. Wow. That was insane. I never stood a shot for a second there. Yeah, that th this matchup is just not beatable. And Ginger's draws were way above average. All right, see you next round. All right, here we are sitting pretty at three and one. Can we get that trophy? Can we get that bread? His hand is really awkward. Super, super awkward. We can do better. This is better. Keep. Mm, we're playing against the Lurus deck. So I think I'm gonna go turn one Balakut. And the reason for that is so that we can go, we can just get value from our saga, as opposed to it just, you know, going to waste. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is just, oh. Wow, we're really not catching a break today, are we, huh? <laughs> uh, okay, we do have we do have our main deck um what's his name though right we do have we're playing 80 cards and we do have main deck endurance all right endurance not milled just yet definitely gonna go for saga here <clears throat> which means that we're gonna be a little bit further away from this valakut but I think that we're going to get owned by drawing the lock anyway, so. So we really want. Interesting Hallowed Fountain. All right. Explore. Let's 
think I'm just gonna copy my my own saga here. There's two amulets gone, though I don't care about that too much. It's more about the fact. Field of Ruin. Okay. Doesn't matter too much. In fact, it's kind of good for me if they go for just like, okay. Unless they have another archive trap. This makes my mana a little bit more stable. Definitely gonna have find a basic forest here. Yep. Another mill kind of sucks, but it's not the end of the world. It's not a bad draw. It's not a bad draw at all. To explore first. Play land, bounce, replay this, go to combat, attack, make a token. Take two. Next turn we can make another token. Never mind. Can't can't make another token. Also, we're out of basic forests. The second field is bad for us. I think that the first one was good for us. <clears throat> Particularly the fact that they randomly milled. They, they randomly milled the other one. It's just so much worse for me, but Okay, well, here go my constructs, and I'm not attacking with the Gracer, because uh, they could have, what's his name? Um, now the question is, I think I'm going to put urine in hand here. The question is whether I want to hold a Sanctuary here, but because we're still one land drop away, from being able to trigger Valakut, and I think that if we do get one Valakut trigger, that's probably going to be enough. Remand? Interesting, but okay. Play that, so you go. <clears throat> Still got 36 cards in our deck. Prismatic ending one of the constructs, that sucks. 30 cards in our deck. If we draw a bounce land, we actually may just win here. Which I'm obviously very happy about. Any land will do though. Here's a dryad. Remand? Sure. Here's a dryad. That kills the crab. Wait, this is new. Always yes to F Pavlush. Okay. All right. Um, can this even fetch anything? One temple garden, two temple gardens. So I'm not. It's just. Do I have one temple garden more? Think so? Yeah, I think there's one Temple Garden left. <clears throat> Maybe we have any land? No, brutal. So, here's three damage. Ooh, this sucks. <clears throat> Twenty land cards. So funny. I think so, right?
one temple garden, one forest, two forests. Yeah, there's still one temple garden in the deck. Still one temple garden in the deck. It's a crab. Mill 14. And their last card is Lurus, so... Their last card is Lurus. I kill the crab. Then I attack. They block Reclaimer. They take four, but they go up to seven. So we still have to draw land. I think that this three damage matters. The three damage matters more. So I'd like to pay two life. Yes, for value. <laughs> Kill the crab. <clears throat> so, mill 14. Okay, so I guess I was dead regardless. Yeah, I forgot that they had something under, under their lock. Um, yeah, there was nothing I could have done there. Get those endurances in there. Um, Probably the relics. And I'm adding five non lands. Sorry, four non lands and two lands. <laughs> I guess. So half my deck is lands? Yeah, sure. Of note, if we had had these six extra cards in that matchup, we would have won. In, in that specific match, we would have won, so there's that. Let's see if playing 80 cards in three endurances can finally make it so I can bid mill. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> it's not a good match. All right, here we go. 86 cards. Oh, see, it's almost so good. Better keep Photom Gracer. Also, that was a multi five on my opponent on, on the last round. I just realized bad matchup is bad. <clears throat> yep, that's a crab. Cultivator Colossus. So much exploring. So much exploring, so little time. Sure. There goes Primeval Titan. There goes Vesuva, and there goes the basic. Hallowed Fountain. Tapped. Mail me. Nile Spellbomb. Okay. Pass the turn. Not that we can really do anything else here. The good thing is that if my opponent's kind of just holding on to a remand or something. We get to play the cavern, which is nice. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> we're gonna cavern on beast, obviously. They do shock there. It's pretty bad news. Fracture sanity. Another cavern. So we're gonna cavern on giant here. Yeah, cavern on giant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Play that guy. Please be good enough. This tramples, right? It does. 
with that on burn. Put that into play, put that into play, and now we're done. Here we go. <clears throat> Yorgo! Nigel Spellbomb's kind of messed up, I gotta say. The Nigel Spellbomb there, kind of messed up, means that my endurance is not even that good. Mm hmm. So that's my double strike land gone. The endurances are there, but they just don't really do anything. They just force a crack on the spell bomb. Stronghold's still there. So that's probably the play. So we're probably dead to path to exile. <clears throat> okay. Did we dodge? We did dodge sick. That's awesome. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. I guess there's nothing they can have. Well, made as well gonna be using the mana anyway one two three four five six and I guess I didn't check if I have a bounce land because I'm gonna need a bounce land here I do have one no two more bounce lands okay easy game <clears throat> Easy game. Haste the bad boy. Can he attack you, please? Lethal. All right. Shout out to Cultivator Colossus. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so they have <laughs> they have spell on to play around my endurances. It's kind of messed up. If you think about it, it's kind of messed up. So maybe I want one explosives to transmute for. Just the one of fun of. Can we get the W? Definitely keeping this hand, by the way. <clears throat> Most definitely keeping this hand. I've never, never mulliganed Flagstones, Reclaimer, Green Source hand in my life. Not, a, not about to start right now. Sherman's kind of gonna own me, but it is what it is. Don't appreciate you playing all of those, those romance opponents. Don't appreciate it. Don't like it. Get out of here with your silly romance. Ah. Stupid and sexy romance. Funniest thing is like this card is just so bad right now. It's obviously fantastic against me, but obviously very good against the stupid Primeval Titan deck, but getting milled. Getting milled and I don't like it. Stop milling me! So much milling, so little time. 
So what I could do here, what I could do here, I think I'm, oh, ho, 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 ho. well, it's not bad. That is not bad, my friends. That is not bad. This is not lethal. But... But I can haste. Um, <clears throat> actually, is this lethal? Maybe this is lethal. Is this lethal? Who knows anymore? Did I mess it up? Yeah, because I could have I could have had cast the endurance to shuffle. Oh no, I can I just pitch. Yeah, I just pitch to the endurance. Like this is just fine. Yeah, this is just lethal. So, cast endurance with evoke. Here, it's really funny, but we actually want to have the evoke trigger result last. So, we want this to sacrifice. We want the endurance to get sacrificed and go to the graveyard. And then we want for the cards to be shuffled back. So, it's really funny, but this is like the only case scenario, I guess, when, where this is supposed to happen in this order. I guess that against Goif is the same thing, but like it's just it's something to keep in mind. Beating Mill. Beating be mill, oh man, just feels fantastic. All right, so that was better than expected, didn't it, huh? Um, that was a cool league. That was a cool league. And what I really liked about that is that it didn't really showcase the power of Yorion. Like, like we, we never cast the Yorion, we never needed to cast the Yorion. What it did showcase, however, is number one, the power of Reclaimer. Like, this card is so good right now, and it doesn't surprise me at all that there are some some John shells that are starting to pick up the card. So it's basically just your classic, you know, Sagavan uh, deck, uh, but playing Reclaimer instead of uh, Darcy. And it doesn't surprise me at all, because this card is messed up. Like, and, and I have to say that this is probably the best Reclaimer deck that there is, um, because... It just has so much flexibility in this deck, right? Like, it can go get your castle, it can go with your bounce lands, can go get your titans, your sagas, more often than not, your valakets. We actually won a match by going to get valakit and just, like, you know, didn't, never needed to cast a primeval titan. So, <clears throat> this league really showcased the power of Elvish Reclaimer and why it's, you know, my second favorite card of all time. Um, so, it's it's strong. It's very, very strong, and it's definitely worth exploring a shell like this. The other thing that this league kind of showcased is how free it is to have 80 cards in your deck. <laughs> like, uh, even in a deck that gets hurt the most by, by you know, having more cards that are sort of, you know, diluting your deck or whatever, it just didn't matter, right? Like, it just didn't matter. Sure, like, I got a little bit lucky, particularly winning the mirror match, which you would assume that I'm just, you know, I'm just unfavored by definition. But um, it's one of those things where, like, we just drew, like, a normal Titan deck. We just naturally draw cards, and our cards were strong, and we just cast them, and we won. So, sure, we did get maybe a little bit luckier than, than, than normal, but... At the same time, it's just like, it just doesn't really matter. Like, this card is just so stupid because it's, it's just free. Um, and what it did, honestly, is it made me think whether there's the possibility of play an amulet version that plays a heavier white splash and, like, plays solitude and stuff just because you always will have a way to get your solitude. So that's something that I'm going to, a, a card to pitch to solitude is what I'm trying to say. That's something that I'm going to be, you know, tinkering in my in my weird amulet thinking mind and try to see if I can come up with something because it's an interesting concept, you know, having able, having access to removal in amulet is, is interesting. I mean, having access to good removal, I guess I should say, as opposed to something like dismember or whatever. 
but um yeah this this league was fun so hopefully you enjoyed it as well hopefully you had a good time enjoyed us casting some some six mana six sixes if you did of course make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button you can get notified whenever new videos get uploaded in this very channel and while you're at it you know leave me a comment down below with the stuff that you like the stuff that you didn't like i always try to make sure that i answer to every single comment so if you have a question or anything like that I'll be happy to answer it uh, that's gonna be it for me today. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and thanks for watching.